Hello to all of my friends out there in YouTube land. It's your good buddy Filtastic Phil here, and welcome back to my channel. We are here for another installment of Filtastic Reads. I know sometimes I say it's Filtastic Reviews, sometimes I say it's Reads. Um, why is that? It's because I am reading and I am reviewing. I'm just not remembering what it is when I record this later on. I usually record these at night, I'm pretty tired. Uh, I'm multitasking. You might be able to hear our washer and dryer going in the background. That's not a, a spaceship. And if you didn't hear it, now you're going to hear it for the rest of the video. So I've ruined that experience for you. You're welcome. Um, anyway, today's read or review is Incredible Hulk number two from the most recent volume. Uh, this is, again, the Hellfire Gala variant. I'm almost through the Marvel Hellfire covers that I, uh, for the books I typically don't read. Uh, so, trust me, I try to break up what I've been reading lately, and just because I don't want too much Marvel, basically. And I know how that sounds coming from me. But anyway, issue number two, right off the bat, um, nice cover by Brian Hitch. I'm not the biggest Brian Hitch fan. Uh, if you saw my review of Ultimates number two on last week, Today Live, uh, just this past Saturday, then you, you know. Uh, but this one is actually one of his better ones. I do like how he's rendered the Hulk here. Uh, I mean, as far as if, is this a valid Hellfire Gala outfit, that's not for me to say. Uh, but overall, I like it. I don't mind it at all. Uh, now, the story itself, I have not read Incredible Hulk in quite some time. I feel like I've been saying that a lot with these reviews. But that's good, because I, it gives me a chance to kind of dive back in. Uh, this is definitely a creepier kind of tone to the Hulk books than I recall. Uh, it, it almost looks like something more that you would see from, like, uh, I don't want to say a Walking Dead, but definitely a zombie-ish type of television show or, or book here. So it's written by Philip Kennedy Johnson, um, someone whom I don't follow, but I hear some great things about. I probably read some of his stuff before and not even realized it. Art by Nick Klein, um, who does a really good job, I have to say, and he does a drastic kind of style shift in the middle here that's very, very cool, almost a little, like, Sienkiewicz-like. But uh, here, let me just show you an example of some of the art in here. So remember, I, I said it kind of had like a horror zombie-ish type of feel. So quite literally, at one point, Hulk and this girl, I shouldn't say Hulk, he's in banner form for the majority, uh, probably about 99% of the story, uh, kind of look at this guy who you don't know if he's just old or dead or both. As the issue continues, you know, and it is a quieter issue. It's not something that... I could typically remember seeing with the Hulk. You don't have that kind of fast-paced, uh, you don't have a fast-paced action feel um, like the Hulk I'm used to. I um, I dropped off the Hulk right around, just to give you a point of reference, Jeff Loeb, um, when he kind of finished, I think it was the fall of the Hulk's storyline, the Loeb McGinnis run, just wasn't my bag. Um, again, it's a, it's a quieter, kind of more heavy, ambiance that I'm used to with Hulk books. And here's what I was talking about before with the with the style change. I was actually looking because I thought this was a different artist completely, but it says it's Nick's, it is Nick Klein and he's done the colors on this too. So here's just like a little interlude that is very, very well done. Like I said, it reminds me a little bit of uh, Sienkiewicz. Here's where it gets even creepier. I guess this is inside of one of Banner's dreams. So not only do you see these monsters walking around, but uh, yeah, of course, Hulk is referred to as a monster both by Banner and by his partner, I guess, in this book, which is nothing new. People have called the Hulk a, a monster before. But I, I like this kind of interplay of both, uh, both internal and external monsters. Uh, it ends itself uh, in a really, really creepy way. I'm just going to show you I'm not going to give away the actual ending here, but uh, take a look at how creepy this is. It kind of reminds me this whole kind of church congregation town hall scene kind of reminds me of something you would see in like maybe like one of the Resident Evil games. Uh, specifically for me, Resident Evil 4. I think that was the last one I played through entirely. Uh, I know that's been remade to nauseam at this point, but it was a very good game at the time. It's got that same kind of ambiance. And then on the last panel, of course, you see the Hulk making an appearance. And no, I'm not giving it away why. I mean, if you didn't know the Hulk was going to pop up in the Hulk, 
I, I don't know what you expected to read. So using our grading scale, which again is uh, must read, good read, meh, and burn after reading, where all bad books go to, uh, as I like to refer to it as comic book hell, uh, I'm going to say this was a good read. Um, I, I can't really accurately say that it's a must read. I, I guess I would need the bigger storyline to make that determination. Maybe that might be a fault in my grading system. Yeah, that's something I'm going to have to judge over time, and I'm sure that you guys will help me by leaving a, a comment down below uh, if you like this grading system or not. Some people seem to be receptive to it so far. Uh, I would be interested in picking up more Hulks. I'm not really adding anything to my run, so I'm probably just going to read that online. Um, and that's why it's not a must read, I guess, for me. It's just a good read. But overall, a, a good chapter. Uh, it doesn't feel too cartoony or quirky. And really, most importantly, especially for Hulk, it feels different. It feels like we're in uncharted territory, at least in my experience. Um, before I go and before I sign off, I don't know if I've given out this letter yet. Uh, but if you are following our 300 subscriber giveaway, we have officially hit 300 subscribers. Thank you very much for spreading the word. I appreciate that. And uh, you, you might need this letter for a password. Now, if I've given this letter away already, then this is just a dupe. But if I haven't, then you're going to need this letter. And I don't know because I had it written down and it mysteriously disappeared. That's all I'm going to say. So here's your clue. Okay. Now, uh, at this point, I've given away all the letters for the password. So if you have the password, go ahead and message me on Instagram to be eligible to win a prize. Um, you'll hear more about that this coming Saturday on Last Week Today Live, 11 a.m. Eastern. Until then, thanks again for checking out my channel. I do appreciate it. Peace, love, and comics. Take care.